a way for uh to get more people logged in uh, and we'll get started let me let me get a couple of documents ready right now while we're waiting let's see Give me one second. Let me pull up uh, Blackboard and then we'll get started. See, we got 36 people logged in. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, perfect. So first things first, I think a lot of you are in my 10 o'clock class, so I don't have to introduce myself. Uh, I sent out an announcement uh, about a week ago and with a survey link in it. I need that information uh, since this is a hybrid class and we're going to have some on-ground meetings. I need that survey information. So let me grab that again. And I'm gonna put the link in the chat. If you haven't responded to that survey, uh, I need you to respond like ASAP. That way I can set up uh, the groups and know who's coming in person and who's gonna be streaming and all that kind of stuff. Let me find this document again right quick. I'm gonna put it in the chat and that way you can uh, respond to it that way. Uh, Give me one second to paste this in here. Got 34 responses, so that's good. That's excellent. Um, I found the link. I just put it in the chat if you couldn't find it just now, the form link. Oh, you beat me to it. I appreciate it. So the link. Oh. All right. Uh the link, so the link to the the survey is already in here. 
it says I have 34 responses and right now there are 36 people in here. So I, I know there, has, there must be a couple of you who haven't filled it out yet, but I just need that information uh, for the upcoming weeks so I can set up the in-person groups because with COVID, we still got to do social distancing. Uh, we still got to keep, you know, six feet, all that good stuff. So, um, and I don't want anybody getting sick and I don't want to get sick. So what we're going to do is for the in-person part, we'll have like a small group, maybe three to five people uh, per in-class on-ground uh, course. And then everybody else would just stream in using the same link. All right. Uh, let me pull up a syllabus and then we'll go over that. And I got a couple of other things I want to go over with you uh, in Blackboard. And yeah, and then we'll be done. So we probably won't be here very long. But the syllabus is, let me share my screen and then I'll just pull it up. And you should be able to, to access it. I had some of these um, folders like closed, so you can't get, couldn't get to the information like the tests and stuff like that. But I'll open it when it's time. Um, share my screen. Doctor Ross, I have a quick question. Yeah, go right ahead. So this lab is from one to five, correct? Mm -hmm. We'll be take. Are, are we taking a break like in between, or do we just um, follow throughout the whole thing? It'll, no, it'll go by fast. Sometimes it won't last until five. I've, it may last sometimes until four, maybe 3.30, uh, but you won't need a break. <laughs> I promise it's always, we're always moving. Uh, and if you're streaming and we get to a point where uh, there's nothing left, then we'll cut the stream. So you don't have gotcha. to sit there and kind of watch paint dry. You know what I mean? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, great. That's a great question. Um, so let me need to delete that right quick. I'll clean all this stuff up. But let me pull up the syllabus and then we'll go over that and then I'll discuss a little bit, uh, some other information with you. Uh, and I have here one thirty to 5, but that was because when we first went on this whole COVID schedule, we had to build in like 30 minutes in between classes. Uh, I may keep it that way. I may move it back to one when we start actually physically doing labs. I'll let you know uh, either way. But uh, if it's on your schedule from one to five, then it's not going to matter anyway. Um, so this is obviously organic. Um, organic one lab. Uh, you need to have passed uh, general chemistry lab one and two with a C or better. Um, I'm not sure, like some majors don't, I guess some majors don't view prerequisites with very much, um, they don't really care about that, but it, it actually does matter that you've had both parts of GCHEM before you take this lab. Um, there's no book. We have a, all of our labs are online on Blackboard. I'll show you all of the procedures are on Blackboard um, and every week. You know, when we do an experiment, it'll, it'll be posted to Blackboard. The lab is going to center around uh, making aspirin, synthesis of aspirin. And from that, we're going to learn different techniques. We're going to learn about how to recrystallize solids. We're going to learn about uh, how to test for pH, for purity. We're going to learn about some spectro uh, spectroscopy. We're going to do NMR, uh, potentially some FTIR. So we're going to learn some, some different techniques that you probably didn't get a chance to. Uh, discuss in uh, GCHEM. Um, for attendance, you need to be here. This part of the syllabus, I'm going to edit out, so just bear with me on that. I thought I went through this and spent hours in this shell, like cleaning it up last week, but the syllabus, I'll edit because we don't, we're not keeping a lab notebook. What we're going to have is a lab data sheet that I've already created, and you will fill in that data sheet as we go along through the different experiments. Uh, all right, so you got you, you, if you're streaming, you need to be streaming, logged in and locked in for the whole class period. If you are in person, then that's not a problem because you're going to be right there with me in the lab. Uh, so as far as pre-lab is concerned, what I'm going to do is just like with class, all of your pre-lab lectures are going to be 
online. So when we do like the first time we make get ready to make aspirin, I'll send you a link that's going to discuss the procedure in detail, right? And it does help to watch that and look up, look at that information <laughs> before you come. Because one thing you don't want to do, as you could probably tell from taking general chemistry lab, you don't want to come into lab cold and not know what you're doing. You want to at least read over the procedure and maybe see a demo or something like that. So when you come in, you know, you know what's going on. Uh, we know about the COVID-19 restrictions and the fact that there are over 40 people in this lab uh, and our the lab itself so for social distancing it should be more than five people in there so we'll have a max of five in you know on ground and then everybody else will stream and i'll rotate that so it'll be a different you know depending on how many people are actually on ground it'll be a different five people every time we meet so everybody who's on ground will have a chance to actually physically touch stuff in lab and you know break stuff and blow stuff up and things like that but if you're not in person if you're fully virtual then you have to, you know, be on the live stream and Zoom does take attendance. So I don't have to. Once I'm done streaming, it'll give me a list of everybody who's there and how long you were in there. So if you come in for five minutes and leave, it's recorded for five minutes. It'll say one, oh, one o'clock to one oh five or something like that. And five minutes doesn't count. So uh, we also have another component to the lab where we're going to do some labs to simulations and this will fill in some of the like time between labs where we may not we may have a week where we don't physically come or uh, or get on a Zoom or anything like that. You'll have some labs to simulations that you'll have to complete. I'm gonna show you the breakdown of every, like everything we're gonna be graded out of because I wanna, I can't stress enough, like black the way Blackboard is set up. If we have 10 assignments and you do two assignments, Blackboard is gonna show your average as if you get a, a, a hundred on both of those assignments, it's gonna show you having a hundred average, but it's not gonna count against you the other eight assignments that you didn't do. So you really have a 20 average and not a hundred. So what I did was I broke down like, cause sometimes when you set up a shell in Blackboard, it'll have like uh, other old exams, old quizzes, stuff that's not being used to grade you, but it'll count it as a part of the point total. So what I did was I broke down the whole, like everything that you're gonna be graded out of. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, and, then, and and you'll know exactly, I'm gonna post the blackboard too, a screenshot of it or a, a JPEG or something, but you'll know exactly what we have to do. So you won't, there won't be any uh, speculation about what my what is my grade. If you look on that list and you know that there's stuff missing, then that's that's how you know what you need to finish or complete. Uh, because I get the same, we get the same thing every semester. Somebody will say, well, I thought I had this, when in reality, that's not the case because the grades in Blackboard, unless you delete out all those old assignments and all that stuff is inflated. Uh, and I tried to do that for this class, tried to delete, you know, as much stuff as possible so that the point total would be as close as possible to what the actual total is. But, you know, some, some things it wouldn't let me delete. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna be doing for the whole semester and that way there's no speculation you know exactly what you've done and what you haven't done you can use it as a checklist uh, and then just go from there uh the uh, i'm going to edit this again because we're not using a lab notebook we are using a um a data sheet and i'm gonna pull that up in a minute and show you and you can download it print it or you can edit it uh electronically however you want to do it uh, but we're not using a lab notebook, so I'm going to skip over this part right here. Uh, I already talked about the pre-lab. The data that we collect, you're going to collect that data in real time. So every time we meet, you need to have that data sheet with you so you can record any data that we collect. Um, Safety-wise, as far as people who come in person, obviously, you're going to have to wear a mask. Uh, you're going to have to have some goggles and we'll provide you with gloves. Uh, and you know, you've taken lab before, so you know, no flip flops, no open toe shoes, no cut jeans, no halter tops, no tank tops, all that good stuff. You wanna wear sleeves and pants and, and thank God it's cooling off a little bit. You wanna wear sleeves and pants when you come to lab, just in case of a spill or an accident, you know, and that'll keep, that'll keep you from uh, getting stuff on your body. 
Uh, the safety quiz is already posted in Blackboard. I'm gonna show you where to find it. And uh, you need to take that and you need to get a 23 out of 23. There are multiple attempts. So you can take it as many times as you need to. And I'll show you where that is. As far as check in and check out, since we only gonna have a few students, I already have the drawer set up. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the exam wise, we take two tests. We take a final and a midterm. And then we take the, uh, you'll, I'll show you the other stuff that, that's going to be collected. Uh, and then as far as grading, just showing up, that's the test grade, right? If you show up to every lab, that's 100 points. Uh, the data sheet is actually, I'm going to edit this, the data sheet is actually worth, I think, 125 or it's either 100 or 125, something like that. Then the lab report is 150. And then the two exams is 200 points. And then the labster is 200 points. So we got six labsters. You got to complete five out of six. Uh, and each one is 50 points each. Uh, lab etiquette, uh, you won't be graded out of that this semester because um, that's just me telling you about safety glasses or having or you having some type of safety infraction or being on the phone or something like that. But the fact that it's a smaller group that will be present, you know, we're not going to worry about that. So that's not, that's not going to be included in the grade. Um, this is the grading scale. 90 to 100 is an A, it's a standard grading scale. 80 to 89 is a B, 70 to 79 is a C, so on and so forth. I'll leave it there. I don't expect anybody to make a D unless you just don't do anything. Uh, we got one lab report that we're gonna, uh, that's mandatory, and it'll be the synthesis of aspirin and six to 10 double space pages type. And it's gonna have a title page. Um, it'll have an introduction and we're gonna have some exercises to help you put this together prior to you ha actually having to finish it. Uh, we got a, um, I think we have a lab introduction, lab report introduction, references, things like that. Um, and then it'll have a data section, which you can use the information from your data sheet that you're gonna fill out to fill out the data section. So you're not gonna have a problem with that. Uh, I'm trying to make this as seamless as possible and um, try to, I don't, I'm not going to say easy, but I try to make it as seamless and as efficient as possible under the conditions that we're working. So um, the report also, also has to include infrared and uh, NMR data, but we're going to do the NMR in real time and I'll give you the data as we do it. So you'll have all of NMRs, and we also have an NMR exercise that we're going to do. Um, and then for, as far as your structures are, are concerned, I have here Chem Draw ISIS Draw or ACD Labs uh, as your, to, to generate structures. They're, they're not easy to use, but if you want to draw your own structures, you can start towing around, especially ACD and ISIS Draw because they're both free. Chem Draw is not. You can start towing around with that. Um, and working with those, but if not, copying and pasting is fine. You can copy and paste the structure for aspirin or for salicylic acid or acetic anhydride. I actually include the uh, reaction scheme in the data sheet. So you can copy and paste that into your uh, report. That's fine too. Um, there's a template in Blackboard. It just says lab report uh, sample or something like that. I'll show you where all this stuff is. And then you need to include your spectra because that's a big uh, chunk of that grade. The spectra and the data are both like huge, and the references are big chunks of the grade. So again, you need an introduction, experimental section. Uh, you need your proceed, like for your procedure, you need a reaction scheme, which is, this is not aspirin, by the way, this is something else, uh, but it's just an example. And then how to write it, third person, dry, like, write it like you're writing it to a um another scientist but without the jargon so go ahead to you um yes when it says all spectra should be included mm -hmm. what does that mean so the spectra is is what we're going to collect when we take the nmr and when we take the infrared those those uh documents you i'll share them with the class so you need to include them in your lab report and okay, it'll, uh, it'll be just an appendix that you add to your lab report. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Great question. Um, yeah, so this is just a, a sample of how you should write up a procedure. You can look over this uh, 
It's, I mean, the syllabus is going to be on Blackboard, so you can look over it. Uh, you need a results section, you need a conclusion, and an appendix that's going to include infrared, uh, NMR, GC, any type of chromatographic or spectroscopic data that we collect, it'll be in the appendix. And then references, I'm really a stickler for references, and I'm really a stickler for the formatting of the references. So I'm gonna show you that in Blackboard. There's a style, an ACS style guide that tells you how to format your references in ACS format. So I'm gonna show you all of that. Academic honesty. So I get this question every year. Uh, everybody has, even though you might be in a group, you gotta write your own lab report, right? There's no group lab reports. It will be easier for me if, the, if it was, but it'll be a disservice to you because technical writing as a STEM major is, something that's very important you and i have to do a lot of it so the best way to perfect it is to practice it so everybody has to write their own lab report there's no group reports of course the data is going to be similar but the writing the introduction all that stuff needs to be original uh we talked about the rules uh if you're present you need to have goggles and again you should be dressed for lab uh you got to take a call step in the hallway don't use your phone while you're doing lab and blow something up. I had that happen before. Somebody was doing, we were doing a, some type of recrystallization reaction, a procedure. Somebody had a whole early March flask of ethanol that was on fire and they didn't even know it because they were on the phone. So just put it somewhere, put it in your backpack. If it rings, if it's important, if it's a bill collector, uh, student loan collector, parents, whatever, just take it in the hallway. Uh, timeliness is very important, especially with the way we're working, uh, kind of like split between virtual and on ground. So you gotta be on time. And I think for the on ground labs, we will maintain the, uh, the 130 time. That'll just give everybody time to get checked in, get in campus, get past the temperature checks, all this stuff. Uh, so we'll leave it at 1.30. Uh, and then the lecture schedule, it's kind of, this is kind of what, what we're going to do, but I'm going to show you all the assignments. As a matter of fact, I can just share that now. Just tell me if you can, can you still see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So we have the data sheet, which I'll show you where it is in Blackboard. You can print it, download it, save it, however you want to do it. Our final lab report, uh, references, a page of references. Uh, an NMR assignment, which I'll guide you through. Actually, we have a video for that and I'll walk you through it. Uh, aspirin quiz, recrystallization quiz, the midterm, and the final, where's the final? Are you on Blackboard? Right now, no. I'm going to share this on Blackboard, though. Oh, oh. Yeah, I, I, I went through the um, uh, Excel file that I downloaded from Blackboard and I deleted everything that's not going to be graded. And I kept the stuff that I am going to grade. And this will help you keep track of your grade as well, because this is everything that we're going to do this semester. So the lab midterm and the final are here. The points will probably be a little bit different. Uh, and then in blue, these are all the labs to assignments. So there are six of them and you have to complete five out of six. And I'll give you a heads up as to when those have to be done. Um, but that's the that's it, right? This is everything for this class that we're going to turn in. So the, you should not, you won't have a question if you look at Blackboard and say, well, I thought I had an A. If you look at this list and there's anything missing from this list that you haven't done, then you'll know, well, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I missed this. I missed that. So that'll take the confusion out of it. Oh, hold up. What about now? We can see, we can see it. Yeah. I, let me make sure I'm sharing my, just my screen and not just a particular. Uh, yeah. What about? Okay. So we can, you can see the Excel file now. So this is, but I'm going to post this to Blackboard. Uh, so you don't have no problem. You can use this as your checklist. If you check all of them, and you get a hundred on everything, then you know you got an A in the class. But you know you're not going to get a hundred on. Well, you might. Some of you might, but you're not going to get a hundred on every single thing, right? If you you may miss a question on the final, or miss a question on the midterm, or whatever. 
uh, or the aspirin assignment that has some questions, you may miss a question there. But if you completed everything, then you'll know that you're passing the class. If there's something missing, then you can expect that to show be reflected in your grade. It may not cause you your grade to drop very much, but you'll know, oh, I missed this, and that's how I ended up with a B instead of an A or whatever. Um, but this, I'm, I'm going to post this so you can use this as your checklist, and you'll be good to go. Uh, all right, let me go back to Blackboard. Can y'all see my still see my screen? Yes. Do you see my web browser and not Excel? Yes, sir. Okay, all right, all right. Just want to make sure. All right, so let me go back to Blackboard. That's a, that's what a, that's the extent of the syllabus. So over here, where it says an information, that's where the group information is going to be posted. So I'm going to go through those surveys, pick out like the groups that'll show up in person based on who's who answered that they are on campus or on ground, whether you're in Auburn or wherever. Uh, I'll make those groups up in the next week. And probably next week, we won't have a physical lab because I I got a bunch of other stuff I got to finish. But the week after, we, pro we that's when we'll be on ground. So you'll have your groups by then. You'll know, okay, this day I'm coming and I'm a part of the five people or the four people that have to show up in person. And we'll do it that way. Uh, the syllabus and course information, you already see that. Like this is where the syllabus is going to be housed. I'm going to edit the document that I had displayed on the screen, <laughs> excuse me, and update it based on uh, what we discussed. And uh, we'll leave it there. All right, course documents. This is where all of your uh, information is going to be. This is where the sample lab report is going to be. This is where the weekly experiments are going to be. So if I were you, I would get this uh, experiment one and go ahead and download that, right? You can, you can see right here, here is the reaction scheme. You can copy it, paste it into your lab report. Uh, this reagent table is very important, but that's also on the data sheet that we're going to fill out. Um, and then the procedure, how to make it like what we're going to be doing. Everything is right here for vacuum filtration, for purification, recrystallization, all of that is all in the same document, the melting point, uh, and then the characterization. This is the entire experiment. The only thing that we're not going to do here is the TLC part, right? But everything else is there. Um, and that's it, right? So go ahead and download that so you can have that handy when it's time to do the experiment. Uh, the NMR part, go ahead. I see two hands raised. I don't know who was first, so uh, go right ahead. Um, are we um, supposed to be able to see this on our Blackboard currently, or will we upload it, upload it later? No, it's there. I, it may have been um, hidden. Okay, because I don't, I don't see anything currently. Yeah, you should, but you should be able to see the syllabus link, the course documents link. See how, like right here on this link, there's a little box with a line through it. That means it's hidden from you, but I can see it. But in the student view, you should be able to see anything that's that doesn't have a box next to it. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me switch to student mode and see what it looks like. Yeah. So I can if, if this is what it should look like for you right now. I can't um, see the course documents or the assignments on my Blackboard. Me either. Weird. Really weird. All right, I'll make sure that it's, it's um, I'll make sure that it's available. It may have to like cycle back through because I, I just turned them, I just like uh, took off the high feature. So maybe it has to cycle back through. <clears throat> but you'll be able to see it. Uh, and so right here, we talked about uh, course documents. Let me go back to that. Uh, you can, yeah, I have this hidden because the notebook requirements are going to be different. All of this other stuff is you can not worry about. You can, I think I have it hidden so you can't see it, but uh, I'll go in and delete it later. All right, so let me go to here, assignments. This is the big shebang right here this has everything in it so the data sheet this is what we're going to be let me open that 
and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. You can download it. And that's what we're going to be filling out. Like every time we meet, we're going to fill in a different section of this data sheet. So let me open that. It'll, it'll come up in a second. And then the uh, NMR assignment is right here, right? There's a video that you watch prior to completing the assignment. And then we'll also, hopefully the, uh, the NMR is fixed and we'll actually take the NMRs in, in real time. And we'll have a group of students in the NMR lab and then everybody else will stream it out uh, to them. And then we'll do that in real time, right? You have a, uh, a draft. Let me go right here. It's hitting it. The reason it's hidden is because it has a due date on it, I think. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. I'll remove the due date so you'll be able to see. But anyway, you have a, a link where you need to upload a draft of your introduction to your um, lab report. Right, so this will be due way before the lab report is due, just to, uh, so you'll already have your introduction written and the procedure written. Uh, and I'll critique it, give it back to you, give you feedback, things like that. Uh, there's a references link where you're going to have an assignment where you need to find three references from a scientific journal. And in this references link, there is a note. Only one lab report. Good question, uh, Shakari. That's only one lab report. So it's different from GCHEM, right, where you do an experiment, you got to turn the thing in immediately or the next day or something like that. No, we what we're going to do is collect data and then compile it all, right? So it's a little bit different from GCHEM. Uh, for references, like right here, anytime you have a reference and you need to know how to format it, that's what the style guide is for. So I included it in that references link. So it tells you how to reference books. It tells you how to reference conference proceedings and abstracts. It tells you how to reference data sets, how to reference a dissertation, encyclopedias, journals, websites, all of that, patents, everything is here, right? And so what, you, what you'll do is when you find your three references, you're gonna format them according to the ACS style guide and turn that in. All right, then you have a link to upload your final lab report. And then we're not doing an IB. This is going to be hidden from you when you open that, but uh, we're not doing an IB program. So that's everything that you're going to have to submit right here. All right, and that data sheet, let me see if my dinosaur computer opened it. Yep, the data sheet is right here. And you can see on, is, is my screen still sharing? Can you see the Word document? Yes. Okay, great. All right. All right, so in the, this is your data sheet. The first thing that's gonna be filled in is what we call a reagent table. <laughs> You're gonna look up the molecular weight for salicylic acid, acetic anhydride, the density for acetic anhydride. This is a solid, so it doesn't have a density. You'll look up the melting point or the boiling point of those compounds. And then the amounts we'll get from the procedure. So we'll fill this in the day of the experiment, the required amount and the actual amount. And then we're gonna convert that into moles and determine which one is the limiting reagent so that we can calculate the theoretical yield, right? So that's after, that'll be after we do the purification. So we know the limiting reagent. And then if we know the molecular weight of aspirin, that'll give us the theoretical yield. And then the actual yield is what we collect, which we'll do in lab, and we can calculate the percent. It's actual over theoretical times 100. Uh, and then we'll, for recrystallization, we'll do, we'll, all these amounts will be filled in at the time of that experiment. And then if we have to do a hot gravity filtration, which we've had to do in the past because we got cheap filter paper. Uh, so sometimes there'll be some filter paper floating around in, in the solution. So you got to filter it off real quick. Uh, you'll just check yes or no with that. And then we have a calculation for percent yield right here. And then this is also, I thought I updated this, but this is, and it says update. 
this is also going to be uh, used to fill in the pH and the um, uh, iron chloride test. So I'll add those tables. I know I have this thing updated. I'll swap this out because I need to. I need to make sure that those pH tables are in there. But anyway, this is what you'll what you'll download. Don't do it right now because I gotta make an update to this document. But um, you'll have this, and every time we come to lab whether you're streaming or in person, you'll bring this with you. And this is gonna take the place of your lab notebook because this is where you're gonna record all your data, right? Um, already went over syllabus, assignment list, blackboard layout, talked about the surveys. I think, let me go back to here. Oh, right here, testing exams. If we, have, we, have, we take the final and we take the midterm, they'll be housed in this link right here. You can't see it on your end yet, but the test, any test we take, whether it's the, a quiz, final, midterm, whatever, it'll be in this in this uh, content area, labeled tests and exams. All right, any questions? Anybody have any questions about anything? I have a question. Go ahead. When is the first day of lab? So next week, we may do a labster, which will be the 24th. So the week after that, which will be, would that be September 1st? The 31st yeah, of August? Yeah, 31 days, that's right, that's right. So it'll be August 31st will be our first experiment. But next week, we won't have a lab because I'm still trying to get set up with the second section and I got another uh, GCAM section running at the same time. So I'm still trying to get that uh, cleared up. So next week, we'll probably have uh, one of the labsters be assigned to you and you just complete it before the following week. And then on the twenty, on the thirty uh, first, that's when we'll probably meet physically for the first time. Okay, thank you. And by then, I'll have the group sorted out about and know who's coming in person and who's going to stream and all that stuff. All right, so you can you can put that down somewhere. I'll actually put it into the chat that our first physical meeting will be. Uh, where is it? Right here. First physical meeting will be eight thirty one. So next week you'll get an announcement, you know, saying complete this labster and you'll go into where it says right here. Let me go ahead and unhide that uh, labster simulations. You go into that and uh, and and do that, whatever, whichever one I sign. But again, there are six total and we only, you're only gonna be responsible for completing five out of the six. All right, any other questions about anything? All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing and see. I got 39 people logged in. Wow. All right, if there are no questions, I'm gonna let me start recording too.